Ice Locked here with Nocturne Gaming, back with more Legends of Eidolon, and today we're taking a look at how to get the most worship souls. There are three main things we need to look at to be able to generate the most souls from each totem. The first one is worship efficiency. This is a multiplier that we can generate from multiple sources, and the more worship efficiency we have, the more souls we're going to pull from that totem for every bit of charge that we spend. The second thing is bonuses. These bonuses come from multiple sources and is shown here by bonus souls on this map. Now this multiplier is pretty small, but it does add up a lot and it comes from a couple different sources. The first is going to be your food effect. So using the soul bowl gum to get as much food effect as you can. And then the second is going to be a void walker talent. This void walker talent gives a multiplier based on your trapping and worship levels. And the third is going to be your totem levels themselves. The higher level totem you have, the more worship souls you have. For our last stat, it's going to be how much charge we have and how much charge we generate each day. So the current charge that we have is just a calculation that just adds up over time and it's our points that we can spend to generate souls. So we need to generate as much charge per day on every character, mainly so that the wizard class can use the talent charge siphon and pull all of your charge from all of your characters and get the most souls out of it. So we're going to break this down and go over all of the different stats throughout the game on how to get more worship efficiency and talk about a few of the things like the, the food effects and the talents as we go. So to get started, first up is our gear pieces. The gear that we want to use is anything that gives us the most amount of either skill efficiency or the most amount of wisdom. So for our gear pieces, we want to use the Magma Core set. This is also called the Dreadlow set, and this gives us the most amount of wisdom out of any gear in the game because it has a high base value as well as percent to all stats on each piece. So you want to use your four Magma Core pieces. For your weapon, it's the same thing. The best weapon that you can get currently is the Staff of the Undead, and it gives a very high amount of wisdom. From here, your pendant is going to be the Divine Scarf, and this is only because it gives this 101 wisdom without any additional upgrade slots. It's just a flat 100 wisdom, and all of our stats get multiplied by about nine times, so this pendant is giving me about 900 wisdom to my base stats. Next up is going to be our rings, and we want to use serrated rex rings. These give you 8% skill efficiency apiece, as well as a decent amount of wisdom, depending on if you used your upgrade stones on the wisdom. So I recommend having three sets of these rings to get the most out of each character. On your equipment tab, we're going to have a few things that are important here. The premium hat, there is no hat that gives us a lot, so just anything that can give you a lot of wisdom, use your upgrade slots if you can afford the premium stones, and get the most wisdom out of it that you can. For your trophy, we have two trophies that are optional, and one may be better than the other for you depending on your overall stats. For me, King of Food effect is the best effect and I'll get more souls per pull than I will get from the idle skilling trophy. Yes, I will get more efficiency from this, but we really want to pay attention to the bonuses that we gain from the soul bowl gum. So that food effect actually does help me quite a bit. Plus it also multiplies my golden grilled cheese, which is mitigating the effect that I'm losing from not using the idle skilling trophy. So back to our equipment tab though, we can use either one of these. The, the difference is going to be pretty negligible, but when you're spending thousands of a charge at a time, you do want to get every bit that you can. For your wings, you want to use something like the Giant Violent or the Gilded of Font wings that give you more skill efficiency or the Giant Violent wings that give you percent to all stats as this gives me more wisdom and in turn gives me more skill efficiency. The Gilded of Font wings are slightly better here, but you need to keep that in mind that they are a low drop chance. So if you haven't gotten them, this is the next best in slot. For your key change, you want to use anything that gives you a large amount of wisdom. AFK gain rates do not help us here. So just the most wisdom that you can and your best wisdom keychain in the top slot. For this one, I'm also using more wisdom here. I'm still working on getting those keychains. For your tool slots, this is gonna be really important to get as much wisdom as you can for each of your tools. 
and make sure you're using your upgrade class your upgrade stones on a mage based class for these tools to get the most wisdom out of it most importantly is using the best skull that you can the current dreadnought skull gives you the most worship power the most wisdom and the most total stats from three percent to all stats one really big thing to mention here and this is where your charge speed comes into play and your maximum charge the higher level charge that you have the higher, higher level skull you have gives you a higher base maximum charge rate as well as increasing the speed the speed increases your charge speed per day so the better skull you can use on every character will give you a larger pool that you can pull from each week so all in all make sure you level up all of your characters to at least level 70 so that they can use a better dreadnought skull for your food, we kind of went over this already, but it's soul bull gum to give you a higher soul gain per pull. These are consumed relatively quickly, so make sure you make enough of them and use anything that you can to reduce your food consumption chance. And then other than that, you want the golden grilled cheese nomwiches for more base stats. Moving on to our talents next, this is going to be very similar to just your normal chopping efficiency setup but we want to have talents that are smart efficiency for more total skill efficiency book of the wise for more base wisdom on tab two you just want individual insight and untwisted robes to give you more wisdom from your equipment everything else is optional such as free meal to reduce the amount that you're using your soul gums and on tab three we have a few more things here starting with charge siphon the better charge siphon you have you actually do get a bonus from it so I get 10% more charge when I pull it from other characters. And then after that, we want souls, which gives us a more worship efficiency for having more four souls in your storage chest. So if you can, when you're working on maxing out those vials, make sure you stack up and try to get to a billion green souls and then work on all of your other souls before you actually spend these on that vial. It is a little bit of a delayed process and that button's very tempting, but hold on to them for now. Nearby outlet is decent if you can run this on, on your active build, so don't put this on a secondary build because it's not effective unless you actually have points in it at that moment. After that you have Wizwombo to give you more talent levels in Book of the Wise, this really adds up. And then we have st uh, Staring Statues, which doesn't really help us too much, so we'll ignore that one for now. And then we can get a little bit more wisdom out of uh, Occult Obols from our Obols. Moving on to tab four, we have two primarily th primary things that help us. First is utmost intellect to give you a percentage to more wisdom and more talent levels again in Book of the Wise. The second thing is skill whiz to increase the effect that wisdom has on skill efficiency as well as another small bonus to your base wisdom. Everything else on this tab is more optional. Symbols of Beyond is worth it if you can get to the next nearest 20 points to give you plus one levels, which helps all of the rest of your talents out. The Family Guy not is not too big of a deal here as we're only getting a small amount of wisdom from this character. And the bonuses that you're giving, other than the plus extra levels from your talents, is not going to be a large bonus to all of your other stats. Moving on to your star talent tab, you have a few things in here that can help you out a little bit, such as Will of the Eldest to give you another 45 to 50 base stat, depending on your character level. Toilet paper postage stamp isn't a really a big deal for this, but this uh, talent setup does work for my chopping efficiency, so I have it anyway. And then on tab two, you have a couple things such as frothy malk to increase that boost food and make that soul bowl gum more important. And then super source for more base efficiency uh, from all of your skills. This does include worship, even though it doesn't say it. I do recommend putting points into cardiovascular as getting cards for your souls is kind of difficult at times. On to tab three, the only thing important here is stat overload as it is another 300 base wisdom. On to our star signs, there are three star signs that do give you some benefits, such as the Mount Eateris to give you more food effect. It does also reduce the chance to consume those soul gums. On the Hydrant tab, the main thing we want is Praise Bia, which gives us more worship efficiency and a little bit more EXP to boot. The last one is kind of a gimme tab, and we're just taking the 3% wisdom from Wizpomo.
And going through the world, starting in World 1, for your statues, the main thing you have is the Two Soul statue that gives you more worship power, as well as the Feasty statue to increase that food effect yet again. For your stamps, you do have a few things that can help you out. In the main thing, it's going to be Wisdom from the Book Stamp, Arcane Stamp, and farther on down, the Intellecto Stampo, which gives you more Wisdom as well. It's worth mentioning the stat graph stamp for more base to all stats as well. Onto your skills tab, there's only a few stamps here that actually affect your worship in any way. And the main one is the flow in stamp that increases your charge rate per hour. This is a multiplier, so the more that you have this leveled up and the higher your wisdom level, the more charge rate that you'll get. It is worth mentioning the baked point stamp for your tower defense, but that's not really what we're focusing on here. Also farther on down is the multi tool stamp that gives you more all skill efficiency. So it is worth leveling this up quite a bit. For the companions, there's only a couple that help out worship, but the main one is the main ones are Sandy Pot, which gives you more base wisdom, multi to give you more all skill efficiency. Sheepy can help you with a couple bubbles that we'll take out and take a look at soon. And the main thing is Rift Slug to give you those 25 levels to all of your talents. This can really boost your overall gains just because your account as a whole is going to be stronger. Moving on to World 2 in Alchemy, we have a few bubbles that help us out. First is going to be Stable Genius for more wisdom. And keep in mind that with the multipliers that you get from your second bubble and the 17th bubble, this is more like 5 Wisdom per point, so instead of 1800 Wisdom, I'm closer to 9000 Wisdom from this. Moving on up, we do have a couple more bubbles, such as Labrain Tools, that increase your skilling power from your Worship Skulls, which increases your Worship Efficiency. Farther on up, we have Call Me Pope, which increases your Worship Charge Rate per hour and your Maximum Worship Charge. So this allows you to gain a lot more per day and per week. So when you do your pools, you're gaining a lot more. Now, this is really useful to have the sheepy so that every character has this equipped at all times. So keep that in mind. If not, try to keep this on as much as possible while you're looking for more worship souls. After that, you do have Gospel Leader, and this increases your maximum charge per 10 worship levels. So the higher level all of your characters are in worship, the more max charge you have, which hopefully means you're pulling less frequently, as it is kind of annoying to go through this and do this every couple days. Severa Purple is the next bubble we were talking about that gives you a good multiplier to your first, uh, first bubble, which gives you more wisdom. And then uh, moving on to uh, the slab log soul, which gives you worship power for every uh, 100 items you have in the slab. This is roughly about 28 uh, worship power at maximum level when you have 1400 items in the slab. And it is a decent bonus, but it's not something that's going to make or break you. For Slab Wisdom, this is another base Wisdom Increaser, so you get 1400 items, so 14 times the 16. A little over 200 more Wisdom is not a bad gain for you. Also in World 2 is the Post Office, and there's two main boxes that we're looking for. First is the Food Box to increase your boost food effects. The second is going to be the Worship Crate to give you more Worship Efficiency, more Maximum Charge, and it does give you a small bonus to your starting Worship Points in the Tower Defense. The last one that's main that's worth mentioning is the Myriad Crate, which does give you more base all efficiency and more base stats. However, this does require a ridiculous amount of boxes, so it's not an early game priority. Wrapping up World 2 is going to be your Obols, and the Obols are not as effective as other skills because all they give is more worship power. However, it does add up quite a bit. This gives you a little bit of worship power and a little bit of wisdom from each circle obol and a little bit more on your squares. Your hexagon obols give you five worship power and your sparkles give you seven worship power. You can do the same thing with your family tab and you can get more skill efficiency from the dilapidated slush hexagon obols if you have enough of them. But the main thing is you can see that it adds up to about 78 worship power and about 12% skill efficiency with the stats that I currently have. I could push this up another 12% um, or so on my skill efficiency if I get enough of the dilapidated slush obols, but for the most part, we're just gaining more worship power. 
Moving on to World 3, we're starting with Prayers, and the main thing we're looking for here is the Skilled Dimwit to give you more skilling efficiency. This does reduce your skill EXP, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. But all in all, you're going to get a lot more Worship Souls for using Skilled Dimwit. Another thing worth mentioning here is the Adam Collider's Helium Talent Power Stacker. This is really important for your soul's talent that gives you more worship efficiency based on how many forest souls you have in your bank. So this is going to give you more zeros at the end of your worship souls so that you gain, you gain more worship efficiency from the number of souls that are in your bank. Moving on to World 4 in the lab, we have a couple bonuses that can help us out, and not as many as for other skills, but you do have the Sapphire Nevet to give you 4.5% all stats to increase your wisdom even more. It is worth grabbing the Certified Stamp Book to double your charge rate per hour that you get from that uh, stamp in the stamps. After that, it is worth mentioning the Black Diamond Rhinestone to give you 24% bonus to all of your meals. In the console, we have a few chips that are worth using. First is the card doublers. This doubles the bonuses that you get from the top left card, as well as the bottom right card. So the next ones are going to be the total skilling efficiency chips. This gives you 20% more total skilling efficiency. And then we're using three of the orange doublers. This is going to be the star sign doubler, the trophy doubler and the keychain slot doubler. This only applies to the upper keychain slot, so make sure you have your best oval there. Now, depending on best keychain there. Now, depending on the keychains that you have, it may be worth taking off the keychain and using another total skilling efficiency, as this is going to give you more efficiency than probably having a 6% doubled here. So we can check that by going in here. We're at 1304, and going back in here, we can put back our keychain slot on and check it one more time, and we dropped by 30 million efficiency by using that keychain slot. So make sure you're actually min-maxing your character before you're doing this, and then take screenshots so that you remember what you did last time. But as you increase your stats, this may change, and those percent stats may be more effective in the future. For the dinner menu, the main thing we're looking for is more skill efficiency from the corn, which gives you 2% per level, Farther down, you have the rice ball, which gives you 3% per level. And lastly, the whipped cocoa that gives you 4% per level on each of your dinner plates. For your shiny pet passives, the main thing we're looking for is more bonuses from all meals to get that extra skill efficiency. And then we're looking for the pets that give us base efficiency for all skills. There are several of these pets for each of the bonuses. And if you still need things to work on for your pets, you can pick up anything that gives you ten, like bonuses to base wisdom. These are small bonuses, but they all add up. In the Rift, there are two main bonuses that we're looking at. The first is the skill mastery bonuses. So specifically for the worship mastery, we get more worship efficiency. All worship cards are now passive, which means we can use things that are directly related to all skill efficiency or more wisdom. And then the main thing is that all skill efficiency is plus 5% for every skill that we have above 500 as an account level. So we have 15 skills here that all give us 5%, which is giving us 75% more worship efficiency across our account and for every skill actually. And then the other thing is in the rift that we're looking for is the ruby cards ruby cards allow us to get another level on each of those cards and we can increase our worship efficiency as we grind out those worship cards moving on to the world 5 sailing relics we have two that are going to give us a decent boost everything else does apply smaller boost but these are the main two we're looking for and that is frost relic to give you 30 percent efficiency per tier so at the eldritch form you're getting 90 percent efficiency in world 3 skills which is helping our worship out a lot after that you have socrates which is giving you 10 percent stats per tier which is a total of 30 percent more wisdom in the eldritch form while we're talking about these bonuses, we need to talk about the Void Walker's new talents. And this is going to be mainly the Species Epoch, which is going to give us more critters and souls 
for our combined trapping and worship levels. So the higher levels your worship and trapping is on your Void Walker, the more critters and souls that we're going to get, which is going to give us 467% more souls on this bonus. At, this is currently at max level. So the only thing I can do to increase this is just get more combined levels. After that, there are two other talents that can help us out. The first is Void Statuification, which gives all of our statues to all of our characters a 110% bonus, which is helping out that Feasty statue and that Two Souls statue on our Wizard class characters. And the last one worth mentioning is the Eternal Wiz. This gives us 490 base wisdom as well as plus 490 max levels to Book of the Wise, which is allowing us to push it well over a thousand points into the Book of the Wise. And we're getting a lot more uh, wisdom, which means a lot more efficiency. There is also one more way you can get more efficiency from your Void Walker, and this is rather difficult in my opinion, just because you're using Charge Siphon on your Elemental Sorcerer. But if you can push your Void Walker's worship level above your Elemental Sorcerer, you can get right hand of action applied to your um, Elemental Sorcerer and get another 112% skill efficiency. However, in my opinion, this is very difficult to do and I generally don't try to waste my time doing this. So the last major bonuses comes from two things that we're gonna go over really quick. The first is which cards to use. Since there's no cards that give you direct uh, worship efficiency, we're going to use cards that give us more wisdom and more all skill efficiency. We don't need anything that gives us AFK gain rate. So we're gonna start with things like Chaotic Troll to give us more all skill efficiency. After that is going to be your three cards that give you your percent to all stats, which is going to be Blighted Cheezor down in the bottom right and then Tremor Worm and Stilted Seeker. From there, you're just using any cards that give you more based wisdom. One thing to mention here is it is worth snapshotting your cards to get more card drop rate. The main thing that you need is to have Sir Stash and Snelby in the top right and bottom, uh, top left and bottom right corners, and then also having the Giga Frog card. The rest of these are fillers. I just have drop rate on there for uh, other purposes, but this is my card snapshot setup. So to do this, we just need to leave the map with the leave the map and come back in with that card set up on. So we have the cards on, we come back into the map, and now we can switch back over to our actual efficiency setup, and that's going to give us the bonus card drop rate when we start pulling these worship souls. The last bonus comes from the, to the totems themselves. So the higher wave that you completed on the totem, the more souls you're going to be able to pull. So if you're close to finishing another totem or you've got your towers leveled up, go ahead and do a run and see if you can push it up another 10 waves or so. And this is going to give you rather large bonuses to the amount of souls that you can pull. So that's all of the pieces of the puzzle to get the most worship souls per pull. And today I'm mostly gonna be pulling Frosty Souls and Dune Souls to work on my vials. But before we get started on that, there's one step, and this is a trick that I saw on stream from Heat 511. So shout out to that, shout out to him for showing me this. The trick here is to turn off auto loot before you pull your souls, and then we're going to turn it back on to quickly deposit everything, and this saves several minutes every time you do this. So the main thing here is going to be pulling all of our souls. So we're gonna start with our worship, our frosty souls here and pull as many of these as we can. And once we get these pulled, we'll show you the trick. So we've got all of these frosty souls on the ground here and the trick is going to be running down to your storage chest here. And then what we want to do is open it up and get to the right tab. So we see our frost, our frosty souls. And at this point, we're going to open up auto loot and then go into our storage chest and then just click deposit all. This allows us to basically just continue depositing. And that gives us a lot more souls and a lot more efficiency on picking up all these souls. As even with the maximum bags, you're not going to be picking up a lot of souls every time. So once we have that section done, we're going to go ahead and pull our Dune Souls now. We got a good 60 million from that charge, and we're going to use our Charge Siphon now and pull the rest of these Dune Souls. I don't know if that pulled everything, but 
13,000. I hope it didn't waste the 40,000 charge I had between all my characters, but that's all right. All right, so we've got all of our souls picked up. It is a lot on the ground and I'm kind of lagging for this. So sorry about the frame tearing. Go ahead and deposit these and turn on auto loot and get to depositing. See if we can hit a billion of these souls today. I hope I didn't go over too much, but if so, that's all right. All right, so that looks like all we picked up with auto loot. So I think there's still a lot left up on the ground up here. So we're gonna be careful picking up all of these and it'll take me a few minutes to do this. So I'm gonna end it here for now. Remember to like, subscribe and drop a comment if you're enjoying our videos. And a huge shout out to our patrons. Your support means the world to us. If you would like to become a patron, check out the link in the description for more details. And be sure to visit our merch store so you can get some pretty cool stuff. If you have any thoughts or questions, let me know in the comments below, and we'll see you next time.